Welcome in another comparison ETF video between VIM and DVI. In this video, I'm going to compare expense ratio, holdings. I'm going to focus also on backtest of performance. So let's say that we would start investing in the 2015 $100, $200 a month, and we would reinvest dividends. How well would both perform? We are going to look also on dividend yield history and also on uh like average daily volume assets under management everything i will cover in this video now if you know any other ETFs then you want me to compare share it down below in the comments and i'm really happy to do that and also i if you want to learn how you can make money with etfs and you want to learn some strategies and what you can do ask me like there is a link down below in the description so definitely check it out so without further ado let's start v i m and dvi one is issued by Vanguard, the second one is by BlackRock. The second, the first difference, the biggest difference, there are many differences, is expense ratio. 0 0.06 comparing to 0 0.39. What does it mean? Is let's say that you would invest $10,000. You would pay $39 fee in DVI. On the other hand, with VIM, you would pay only $6. So this difference is huge. Then assets under management is again VIM is winning 40 billion comparing to 18 billion of DVI. Then we're gonna see that average daily volume right here 109 million comparing to 58 million. Then we see also a number of holdings and we see that VIM is more diversified comparing to DVI with the number of holdings. Now, number of holdings doesn't mean much, it depends like the weight in those in the stocks. Why do I say that? Only because like many times, many ETFs got, let's say, there is a, I don't know what the ETF called, but it got like 4,000 holdings or something like that. But first top, first four stocks got like 40% of a whole, a whole ETF. I'm like, what? You know, so you understand. Now, uh, as I mentioned, expense ratio higher in DVI. And then we have the performance here. And I'm going to also focus on fun overlap. You will enjoy that too. DVI was overperforming. Sometimes it wasn't, sometimes it was. 34% compared to 29. One month it wasn't, three months it wasn't. But let's do the performance uh, right after we look on the holdings and what kind of sectors it got. So in VIM got financials, consumer, healthcare, technology and industrials with cyclicals and non-cyclicals and then uh, DVI got utilities, financials, consumer, energy, basic materials. So the focus is completely different. The sector is not that really similar. We are going to look also on fund overlap here. And what does it mean is you can even find it in companies that One Oak, Altra Group, ExxonMobil Corporation, JP Morgan Chase. So we could say that VIM got a more well-known companies to the world comparing to DVI if I could say it like that right and but yes they got also Pfizer AT&T Philip Morris and I'm going to do another thing now I'm going to look on a fun overlap and this is going to be fun so VIM DVI fun overlap you can see clearly that only 24% of VIM 413 holdings are also in DVI and 100% of DVI 100 holdings you would find also in VIM but they are overlapping by weight only by 29% so yes all of the DVI you would find in VIM that's really this is really important information but again you could clearly see that it's overlap by weight by only 29% now you see also the companies that are overlapping and I need to log in again Exxon Mobile, Pfizer, Chevron, AT&T, Merck, and others. So you could always find the companies right here on this website. And now I want to show you the backtest. This is also really fun. So let's say that we are going to start investing in 2010, $10,000 and contribute fixed amount $100 and monthly. VIM. DV 100%, DVI 100%. So let's say that we will be uh, investing not 100 but $200 in, a two in a 2010. 
Yes, monthly. And rebalance annually. Okay, and nice portfolios. What we can find right here, that with VIM from 2010, we would make more money comparing to DVI by $7,000. You could clearly see right here, but it really depends on what, like when you would analyze the numbers, when you would start investing, because look at this, right? 2010 uh, was well-performing DVI. The portfolio two is DVI. Then we clearly see that 2011 two, 2012 was VIM better, VIM, DVI, DVI got some downside, then DVI was performing, 2017 was VIM, VIM, and 2021 right now it's DVI again. So you can clearly see, and you'll need to always calculate the expense ratio into the consideration, and you can always calculate everything here. So there are like both good choices, but it's up to you which companies you like more or which you don't like. And to what you want to uh, invest. Now, uh, these are, in my opinion, from perspective of DVI, it's a large sector imbalance, imbalance, imbalances. Then uh, I don't know about the quality personally about those and yeah and also the high fees so personally i like vim more based on the expense ratio assets under management and companies that are like investing in but maybe you like that maybe you like the dvi more now when you check the look at this year in yield here dividend yield history 3.18, 3.03, comparing to 3.66, 3.41, 3.40, 3.58, 2.80, comparing to 3. So, DVI was our overperforming dividend yield when you look on a data. But yeah, it's like, like up to you uh, if you like it or no. So if you can have any questions, guys, ask me down in comments. I don't really know which one is better and to say, because I don't know what you want, right? Maybe you love utility stocks. What you will find in DVI, you will find also VIM, but with a less expense ratio. And I would personally choose VIM. That's for sure. VIM is a winner in my eyes. But maybe you have different opinion, share it down below. Definitely check the course, how we can make money in the description. Have a great day and goodbye. See ya.